Hi everyone, Mike from the Excel Trainer here. A common task in Excel is to combine text that's stored in separate cells into a single cell. Stay tuned and I'm going to show you four ways to do it. The first method is to create a standard formula. So what I want to do here is combine together the title, first name and surname from columns A, B and C with a space in between. And I want to put that into column H. So I'll go to H4 and start with an equal sign, as you do with any formula, and put A4. Then I want to type an ampersand or AND sign. And that's the character that's used to join the elements together. After the title, I want a space. And because a space is an actual character, it has to go in double quotes. I then need another ampersand and B4 and then another ampersand and then another space in double quotes, another ampersand and C4. So I'm joining together A4 with a space, B4 with a spaced C4 and then press enter and copy it down. I'll do a second example. I want to combine the three elements of the telephone number, that's D, E and F, and put brackets or parentheses around the middle part. So as before, I'll start with an equal sign and select D4, then an ampersand. And here I want to have a space and an open bracket. So that has to go in double quotes then another ampersand, and then the middle part of the telephone number, another ampersand, and then I want the closing bracket and a space, and those two characters need to go in the double quotes, and then an ampersand and F4. The second method is using the concat function. The concat function is actually very similar to the previous method, but because it's a function, each value is treated as a function parameter. So again, I'm going to combine title, first name and surname with a space between each element and fixed strings like the space must be enclosed in double quotes. So in H4, I'll put equals concat. Now you'll notice there's another function concatenate. I will come back to that shortly, but for this one, it's concat. The first item that needs to be part of the combined text is the title, which is A4. Then I have a comma, which is the standard separator for the parameters. And then I want a space. And as I said, that has to go in double quotes, another comma, then B4, another comma, and a space in quotes, another comma, and C4. Close the brackets. So I'm joining together A4 to a space, B4 to a space, C4. And copy that down. Now, if the cells to be combined are adjacent to each other in a column or a row, and you don't need anything between the cell values, you can actually specify a range and blank cells are automatically ignored. So I'm going to combine the three elements of the phone number, but not have any spaces, not have any brackets between each element. So I'll put equals concat, open brackets, and select D4 to F4. Close the brackets and enter. So it's combined together the contents of those three cells with nothing between them and copy that down. You can see that where we do have a blank cell on row six, it's ignored the blank and just combined together D6 and F6. Now, if you want to combine text from several adjacent cells and include one or more characters between each item, as long as it's the same characters, you can use the text join function. So here I want to combine together the name and address into a single cell with a comma and space between each item. So I'll go up to H4 and put equals text join open brackets. 
The first parameter is the delimiter, which is the character or characters that I want to use as the separator. And they must go in double quotes and it's a comma and a space. And then a comma, which is the parameter separator. Now I then have to specify either true or false. True will ignore empty cells. False, as you can see, will include empty cells. I want to choose true here because if we have any empty cells, I want those to be ignored. Otherwise, we'll get an extra comma and space, as you'll see in a minute, because I will change it to false and let you see the difference. So I'll just choose true, then a comma, and then specify the range. So A4 to F4. And copy that down. And you can see that there is no extra space between the 40 Winchester Road and the NR11. But if I go and change this to false, there'll be no difference here because there's no blank cells. But when I copy this down, we've now got an extra comma and space between the 40 Winchester Road and the NR11. The final method to show you is concatenate, which I briefly mentioned before, and that's similar to, but not as powerful as concat. Whilst concat can combine up to 255 items, concatenate can only combine up to 30 items. Also, concatenate doesn't have the ability to specify a range of cells. Each cell must be specified individually. So here I need to combine the first name and the surname with a space between them. So I'll go to G4 and port equals con. Now you can see that we've got concat and concatenate. The warning symbol next to concatenate means that there is a newer function available, in this case concat. The recommendation from Microsoft is that going forward, you should use concat instead of concatenate. If you don't have concat, it's because it's not available in all versions of Excel. Or maybe you do have it, but you share Excel files with external consultants or suppliers who are using an older version of Excel. And if that's the case, you might want to keep using concatenate. Concatenate won't stop working, it won't throw up an error, and I don't think Microsoft will ever remove it from Excel, and if they do, I don't think it'll be for many years to come. So I think you're quite safe to continue to use it, and that's why I'm showing it to you in this video. So I'll select concatenate, and then I need to select A4, comma, and then a space in double quotes, comma, and then B4. And that will combine together the first name to a space to the surname. And I'll do one more example of concatenate. I want to combine together the city with two dashes, the state with two dashes and the zip code. So that will be concatenate C4, comma, two dashes in double quotes, comma, D4, comma, two dashes in double quotes, comma, E4. And copy that down. And with that, I'll wrap up this short video. If you found this video useful, please give it a like and make sure to subscribe for more. If you've got any suggestions for future videos, please let me know in the comments. I also have a free weekly newsletter packed with tips to help you become more productive in Excel. And you can sign up for that at theexceltrainer.co.uk. But until the next time, have an excellent day.